Hi everyone, part two of this tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at how we can make our player move from left to right. It's not going to be super complicated, but we need to start to build the basic of the movement of our player. We're going to also start to work on the animation. And at the end of this, uh, this video, we will have our player that move from left to right when we are pressing the left arrow key or the right arrow key. So we're going to have at the end of this video a player that can move from left to right. This video has been made possible by all the persons that have bought my course on Udemy, so thanks to them. And uh, if you are interested, you have the link in the description of this video. Uh, this project is for my own game Lone Knight. Uh, I will soon start to make like a, a Steam page. Uh, I'm working on it at the moment uh, and soon the Steam page will be available. So now let's get started. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to create our first game object and our game object is going to be a player. And so for that, we need to have the graphism of our player. So uh, I already have some. So it is right here in my Metroidvania asset. Uh, it is in... Uh, first, I'm going to show you what the game is going to look like, actually, because you don't know. So uh, this is my game, Lone Knight, and it's going to look a bit like this. Like I've, ch I've chosen to go for like um, a sort of like... Um, a uh, very simple palette but like uh, with high contrast because i think it looks better and so that's what the, that's what we're going to do with this um, with this serif and that's what i am going to do with this serif because this is my own asset so i don't share it this is for my game so uh, but you, you can use whatever asset you want uh, so here i need to go to my sprite player and i already have like uh, a sprite sheet right here and so that's what i'm gonna use for this game so i need to just take that copy it with ctrl c and i go back to my gd metroidvania uh, uh, folder and here i can create a new folder so it's gonna be called sprite then i'm gonna go into sprite and i'm gonna just create another folder here and I'm gonna call it player just to keep it tidy because it is important uh, so now that this is done I can close that and you can see it go to as like uh, uh, reloaded everything already so uh, now here what I need to do is to create the uh, game object so for that I need to click on my uh, main level which is going to be the, the node of my levels and I click on the plus right here and here I have the create new node uh, menu that pops up and here we have a lot of stuff if you are new to Godot, uh, when we are making 2D, uh, every every node that are in blue are the node 2D, every node that are in red are uh, the 3D one. So us, we're gonna use the uh, 2D node right here, and I'm gonna look for like the kinematic body 2D. But you can see that just looking like this, it's a bit it's a bit dumb. So you can just use the search bar and you go kinematic body 2D, and that's it. I click on create and I have a warning. It says that it has no shape, so it can't collide. So I need to add a collision shape. That's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna click on the, the plus with the kinematic body selected first. And I'm gonna look for a collision shape 2D. That collision shape 2D has a warning. It doesn't have like any shape. So we need to provide one. So we need to click on it. And here to the right, on the inspector or in the inspector we have shape empty and so if we click on it we can uh, have a mini selection of all the uh, shape we can use for this so me i'm going to use a new rectangle shape it's going to be good and so then after that i need to click on the kinematic body to the again and this time i'm going to look for like a sprite this is what's going to display my uh, my player and then here i need to have another thing which is an animation player uh, and for now, that's going to be it. Uh, we're going to have the uh, other things later on, but for now, that's going to be it. I'm going to rename that kinematic body player. The sprite, I'm going to click on the sprite and I'm going to look for my sprite into my sprite folder player here. And I'm going to just drag my player PNG sprite sheet into texture right here. And so now everything is displayed, but you can see that it is blurry. And so for that, what we need to do is we need to go here with that selected, the player selected. We need to go here and import. We have something called preset here and we need to put it on 2D pixel and we need to put it on re-import. And then I can click back on it and I can set as default for texture. This sometimes works, does this sometimes doesn't, I don't know, like uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. I don't know. Uh, so now we have a sprite sheet that pops up. Okay, that's perfect. But we have one problem, which is that it's too uh, it's too big. We just want to display one and one uh, sprite at a time. So uh, here, what we need to do is we need to give it the row. That's that's how Godot gonna know that he has to like uh, show a specific part of the sprite sheet. So we have like four 
uh, row on the uh, horizontal axis and we have how much? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on the vertical axis. So here what we need to do is we go back to the scene, we click on the sprite, we go here on that tab animation and for horizontal frame I'm going to put 4 and for vertical frame I'm going to put 8. And now I have my player. Perfect, that's great. Uh, first I'm going to just uh, change the collision shape right here. I'm just going to make it uh, looks a little bit more like my player. I'm gonna put it a little bit right here. I'm not gonna co cover it uh, completely because like it's not automatically something that you want to do. Uh, you want to leave a little bit of margin so the, the player can just like not collide with things. Uh, it gives a more realistic touch somehow. So now we have that and here we have the animation player. So the animation player first I'm gonna rename it anim. And now what I'm going to do is like here, uh, by uh, selecting animation player, you can see that we have that tab that pops up. Here, that's where we can create our animation. So that's, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to first create my animation by clicking on animation, then new. And here I'm going to create the first animation. I'm going to call it idle. Then I'm going to click on new animation. This time we're going to uh, call it walk. Then we're going to create another animation. It's going to be swirl. And then we're going to have another animation, which is going to be dead. For the earthed part, I will do a shader. So I, will, I don't have an animation at the moment for that. I will have a shader that will be uh, working better. So first, we're going to take a look at the idle animation. So here, we're just going to create that idle animation for now. And uh, for that, I just need to go back here, clicking on my sprite. And now you can see that we have those little key that pops up here. And this is uh, what we call a keyframe. And that's what we're going to use for this, uh, uh, for creating the animation. So I need to go into my frame right here. And I need to key that and I can create and now I go back to 0 0.1 and I move here one frame and I can key and now I can continue to key after I have done that the first uh, the first key you have to always going back uh, up uh, a, a little bit here and then after that is the uh, Godot is doing it automatically I hope it makes sense <laughs> so basically that's how it works Ah, okay so is it is it good? Yeah. Okay. So here you can see that I have like uh, six, uh, seven frames. So my uh, animation here, the length going to be at dot seven. And so now I can put it on loop. And if I play, I have my animation that play normally. Perfect. We're going to do the same for our walk and the sword and the dead animation. We will do it in the, uh, later on because it's going to be uh, a video that's going to be a little bit too long if I do that uh, all in one shot here. So. Uh, I'm going to go to my uh, walk, so it's the seventh uh, frame for me. I'm going to click on the keyframe. Here I'm going to go to 0 0.1 and I have to go up again one time. And then here I have, uh, what is that? So, duck. okay, so this is my sword animation. I just mistaken. So I come here. And so now that I have that, I have six frames. So here I need to put dot six, put it on loop, and let's see. Okay, I need to work on the the, the animation. So don't uh, <laughs> don't be too harsh. Like the animation is not perfect at the moment, but that's, uh, I come up with that in like ten minutes. So this is like I need to work on this. So now that we have those animation, we need to create a script. So for that, we selecting the player. We click on plus here and we make sure that the language is C sharp. It's gonna inherit kinematic body 2D. And then I'm gonna put it into my sprite folder. My sprite folder is uh, my script folder, sorry. My script folder is here and here I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna click on open and I'm gonna create and it's gonna open VS code. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to have a variable. So the things we need to have here, first I need to uh, explain a little bit how um, C Sharp works. C Sharp works uh, with, uh, like C Sharp is a statically typed language. So it means that everything needs to be specified in, um, in C Sharp. You can't have, like for example, if you are uh, creating a variable in GDScript, in GDScript you're going to create a variable, you're going to call it var, uh, and then the, the, the name of that, uh, that variable is going to be um, like player and you can leave it like this and that's fine. Uh, in C Sharp you can't do that. In C Sharp you have to always specify the types of, uh, of uh, the sprite you are using. So if you are using a boolean, like true or false, you need to say a bool and give it a name. If you are using a vector2, you have to say vector2 and you give it a name, etc, etc. And before 
to specify the types of the variable you use, you need to uh, have something that is called an access modifier. And that access modifier is uh, shown like this. So I'm going to create a variable here and I'm going to say public. So this is the access modifier. Then I'm going to uh, give like um, float. And then here I'm going to say speed. And so here I have my access modifier uh, that is public, but it can also be private or protected. Here. I have the type of the variable I've created, and here I have the name. But you can do that for several things, like you, for example, you can say private. Uh, I don't know, what can I put private? <laughs> uh, animation player, for example, if you want to use the animation player that we have created. Up, animation player, and then you give it a name, anim, for example. That's how you do. This is uh, important to understand because uh, basically what is public is uh, accessible by uh, all object, which is private is accessible inside uh, the class of the object, and what is protected uh, is uh, accessible only through uh, the class of the object or all the class that it inherits from. That's basically what it means. So this could be something important. So sometimes you can have errors uh, in your code and uh, you can't access a specific data is because of this. So now that I have created this, uh, I have like the possibility to apply a speed to my player, but I need to have a function that is checking that uh, regularly. And so for that, here we have uh, in comment, we have like void process, but I'm not going to use this one because this one process is not meant automatically for the kinematic body 2D. So I'm just going to come here and I'm going to say public override and here I'm going to look for underscore physic process delta and you can see that in um, in C sharp everything use Pascal casing so there's like the the first the first um, a letter is always a capital letter compared to uh, Godot where Godot is more like a Godot writing uh, is uh, more something like snake case so it's like snake underscore case and you have that like uh, everywhere in Godot. Uh, in C sharp most of those uh, functions are like in Pascal casing. This is important. Um, and so now that we have that we can check uh, if we are uh, getting input and if we are getting input if there is a force that is applied to it. So here what I'm going to do is like I'm going to uh, first create another function Keep, to keep things more tidy, I'm going to say public, void, and here I'm going to say move. And then here I'm going to open curly braces. So first what I'm going to do with that function is that I'm going to create a variable. And so for that I need to say var. And I'm going to call that variable movement and I'm going to set it equal to be a vector2.0. Remember that C Sharp is a statically typed language, so you always need to specify the type of the variable you're creating. So now that we have created that, I can say that here I can say movement.x is equal to input.get action strength. And here I can say, for example, UI, uh, UI right. And then I can uh, say minus input.get action strength. And here I'm going to say between quote UI left. And I'm going to close that with a semicolon. But here, there is one mistake that is made, is that we, uh, it's, it's a good practice in C Sharp to put everything between parentheses. So here I need to put that into parentheses, because when you're going to make if statement, you're going to make if statement through parentheses. So that's important that you do that. So now that we have done that, what we can check is that we can check if we have a movement. And so here we're going to create an if statement for checking if we are pressing the key. So we're going to say if movement is uh, exclamation mark equal, so this, mean, this means not equal, to vector2.0. Then here we open curly braces, and between those curly braces we need to uh, say what's going to happen. And so here what we can say, for example, if we can say like if the movement is not equal to zero, then we need to take our uh, variable movement and we need to apply uh, a force on this. But how Godot going to know that this uh, our, our player need to move? Uh, we need to have another variable for that, and so we need to come here, and here we're going to say public uh, vector2, and we're going to call it velocity. And so now that we have that, we can say that velocity here, velocity, is equal to movement time speed. And we can close it this way. Uh, so now that we have that, uh, we have like almost everything we need 
for making our player move, but we need one uh, last thing, which is we need to call our move inside function because that's the function in Godot that helps you to uh, move an object. So we're going to say that velocity is equal to move and slide. And here, between parentheses, we're going to say velocity. And then we're going to close with a semicolon. And so now that we have created that function, we just need to call it into a function that is checked regularly. And that function, we already have it, it's physics process. Physics process is by default called 60 frames per second. Uh, so it is checked 60 frames per second. That's what the, the delta is referring to right now. Delta is referring to the 60 frames per second. And so here we just need to say move. And we close with a semicolon. And so now that we have done that, uh, okay, it's good, but we have one problem, is that our uh, speed has no uh, value. And so here, what we need to do is like, we just need to say equal, and we need to give a value to it. So I'm going to say, for example, 20f, because we are using a float. So f here means uh, refer to float. And so now that we have that, if I go back into Godot, I launch the game, I should be able to make my player move and you can see my player move so that's good so i just need to like um how to say i'm gonna move it a little bit i'm gonna put it here i'm gonna launch my scene and now you can see that my player is moving so that's great my player is right here but you can see it doesn't stop and this is normal because uh, we haven't uh, specified to godot that it needs to stop so here what we need to say is like if movement equal vector 2.0 we move but else uh, we need to say here else we need to open calibrasis uh, movement uh, velocity is equal to vector 2.0 and we close with a semicolon. So now that all of this is done, if I launch back the game, it should work. So I can press and you can see that it stopped this time. So that's good. So now what we need to do is we need to have, uh, we need to call our animation. So that's what we're gonna do in the next video. And in the next video, we're gonna also create a, a little bit of a camera and so on. So that's it for this video. I hope it has been helpful for you. If it's the case, don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You can also go uh, check my courses on Udemy if you are interested about one of them. Uh, me, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.